Greetings everyone and welcome to another WIST technology tutorial. In today's lesson I thought I'd give you a brief walkthrough of some of the curriculum mapping I've been working on with uh, some Google tools and Google Sites. So this here is just a very simple Google site and I've made this with a generic kind of curriculum account. This way it's not attached to me but to the person, or not to me but it's attached to the institution rather than, than me. And the really only feature on this main page here is just simply a gadget known as uh, Awesome Table. So if, if we look at it, um, it's just called Awesome Table, and that's available in the under More Gadgets. If you scroll down, it's this last one. Um, and there's a lot of great documentation. Simply Google Awesome Tables, and you can find all kinds of uh, really cool things that you can do with these tables. Um, in terms of displaying data and making it uh, filterable uh, to your audience. So that's kind of where I, I started developing this idea for the curriculum mapping was using awesome tables. Um, so in its current state, um, I simply have this table, which is, uh, you can filter it by course title. Again, you can actually put in multiple courses to filter you know a variety of courses at the same time it has this nice little slider so if you want to view multiple grades or if say you're honing in just on the seventh grade courses you can do that um, if you are an instructor and you've submitted units and you want to go back and edit them um, you can simply find your name here and of course you got your link to your units right here and I'll get to that. It's a little bit interesting how this was constructed. Um, and the unit, this is kind of the only one that's available to search kind of by a keyword. So, but it's really responsive. If I just start typing, you're going to see it's going to already look for units that could possi possibly be there. So that's that. And then I can also narrow it down by subject. And I haven't added all of the, the subjects yet. I've just been playing with the functionality of the site. Um, so that's that. And then of course in the table, that's where we get displayed. And this is actual an actual link to an editable Google Doc. So when that is clicked, um, if you are an editing teacher of that document, right within the Google site, you can actually start typing right in here. And you can start uh, building out um, the reflection pieces, understanding activities, performance activities, reflection, whatever it is that you find you want to track within your curriculum, that can be um, maintained through a very simple uh, Google Doc. So I suppose the next question is, is how does one collect that Google Doc? Um, well, I've come up with an idea of simply using Autocrat to push out a template. Um, this ensures that the curriculum account is the owner of the document um, and that the teachers are editors of documents that they request templates for. And I'm going to demonstrate that workflow here. Um, maybe I'll just do it right now. So I'm actually going to switch away from this curriculum account and go over to me. Um, so if I'm a teacher, I can go to request a template. It's going to open up an embedded form. Again, I don't have to leave the site um, to get there. It's just four or five simple questions. Uh, this first one, I'm going to choose a grade level. Second one, I'm going to choose a subject. Go in and choose the course title. So maybe this is Math Accelerated. And then this unit may be, um, I don't know, Algebra, we'll just say. It's a basic. Um, and then I'm the instructor. And if I had co-teachers or other people that who I wanted to also work on sort of documenting what takes place in that unit, I would add them as collaborators here by simply adding their email address separated by commas. And this way, this would give them editing rights to that template when it comes. So right now, I'd like you just to take pay attention quickly to how fast this happens. I'm not sure how fast it happens when there's lots of people doing this simultaneously. Um, but it is kind of interesting from the time I hit submit 
to the time I receive this template. So let's see how long it takes. I'm going to hit submit. So it tells me your template will arrive in your email shortly. So again, Autocrat is doing its thing in the background. This is my inbox, nice and clean. I'm going to hit refresh. And you can see already it's here. All right, template for six math accelerated algebra. I even have a little message about what is going on here. Attached is your curriculum unit template. Please complete and update as needed. Um, so then I can simply open this right here, begin answering the questions that are asked of, and then I can just close it and I can get back to it any time. But meanwhile, back at, in the curriculum account, let's just click home. And we're going to notice already that my unit has been added to this table um, with a link to the unit right here. So I can open this and I can continue working on it within the context of this Google site. So I really only see this request for a unit template being used quite heavily when you're starting to load the, I guess you could call it a database um, of Google Docs with templates. But once it's kind of fully populated, uh, more people will be visiting the links located in the awesome table um, to just edit existing units. And then the nice thing is, is all of those Autocrat documents are going into uh, one folder called curriculum submissions. So my idea would be then if I wanted to archive specific courses, I could just use the copy folder. I think there's a copy folder add-on that could then sort of take a snapshot of that folder per year. Um, and it could still live within this Google Drive, but then as changes take place in those units, um, it'd be very easy either to use the revision history or to go back into an archive and see what a unit looked like at, a, at any given date and time. Um, so I think now we should take a look at the spreadsheet and how what's happening back here. I'm not going to go into how Autocrat works. Um, so. But basically, what I do want to point out is when you do run Autocrat, it does give you a nice URL link to the document. This is very useful um, because in Awesome Tables, the tricky thing I had to do was make that word link appear as a hyperlink. And the only way you, the way you can do that is if you add the HTML markup uh, to that link. Otherwise, it's just going to show up as a URL that isn't clickable. Um, and I really wanted this to be clickable. So what I ended up doing was using uh, concatenation, which here is the, uh, the actual column that appears in the awesome table. This is the actual link, but it's really just a formula. And it's piecing together this quote here plus the beginning of the ahref um, HTML markup, putting in this again is just referencing the this J3 is referencing the URL to the doc, and then of course I closed out the uh, the link right here. So it's just build I built this through the spreadsheet, and that's this is the column. Uh, this is the column that shows up in the awesome tables making it clickable so that that took a while to uh, figure out now and then of course everything is copying down each time a new uh, unit is submitted or actually each time a new template is requested so that's kind of where it is right now um, but I do eventually want to add links to outcomes, um, which again, I, I foresee it being something like a hyperlink here, but probably to the form. Um, and I, I'm thinking along the lines of making it viewable as if you were going to edit your own response, but I haven't yet sorted that part out. Um, but I, I have some ideas.
And then this report section is just simple graphics that I've, I'm using with existing data just from the template request. So if I wanted to know um, kind of my unit distribution based on subjects, this is a dynamic chart that is created based on that spreadsheet data. And I could also see uh, the number of units by grade level. Um, so I can see, you know, where we're investing our time in the curriculum mapping per, per grade level. And then if perhaps if I'm an administrator and I'm curious about who's really active in, in participating in this, um, I could also have this sort of column guide with uh, showing how many units uh, the teachers are taking on as like the uh, lead editor. Um, I haven't yet sorted out ways to mix in people who are collaborators on units, but I think I can figure that out as well. So again, this is mainly just a quick visual to get a sense of who's contributing to the mapping. Um, and then the calendars, uh, I haven't really figured out a good way to integrate them more seamlessly, but currently right now they're just set up as a, as a calendar per sort of kind of subject area. Um, and I'm basing these on the outcomes that were developed. So if, if outcomes were developed for the arts and they're using those outcomes, um, they're going to have a calendar as well. And this way, when you click on it, you could see all of the, the units throughout the time. I mean, there's nothing in here now, obviously, but um, my idea would be to have all day events that kind of just cross the screen and you can kind of get a sense of when things are happening. And the fact that it's a Google Calendar opens it up to displaying multiple calendars at one time um, to maybe spot opportunities for collaboration and so on and so forth. So again, this is still in the very beginning stages, but ultimately it's really, it's really all about this awesome table and getting that to work the way that you want. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough and stay tuned for more features as I uh, build them into it. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.